In this video I will show you how easy it is to use built-in AI functions in Maxed Fabric notebooks to clean messy text, enrich your data with insight and even generate brand new content, all without writing complex code. Stay tuned for more! Welcome to the video, my name is Alexi and I'm a data architect and a Microsoft Data Platform MVP. And on this channel I cover Maxed Fabric related topics. In this video we are going to take a look at the different built-in AI functions in notebooks. That can be used for many different cool use cases. But now without further ado, let's jump into Fabric. Now we are in Fabric and I have my notebook open here. Before we go through those different AI functions, let's first cover the prerequisites that have to be met in order for you to use these. Firstly, your Fabric admin needs to enable the tenant switch for Copilot and other features that are powered by Azure OpenAI. Then, depending on your location, you have to enable cross geo processing. Then, you have to have F or P type capacity. And if you're using a Fabric trial, then you can bring your own Azure OpenAI resources to be used there. And lastly, you have to use runtime 1.3 or later. And here we can check out quickly what is the runtime. And we can see that I'm running the runtime 1.3 in this session here. And then there are a few notes about these AI functions. And by default, these AI functions use GPT-40 mini as the model behind those. And keep in mind that running these AI functions will actually consume your capacity. But this is a pretty lightweight model, so it shouldn't consume that much capacity. But this is just too good to keep in mind if you're running this for huge data sets. And another point to keep in mind that most AI functions are optimized for English language. But yeah, let's start to go through those different AI functions. And before we can use them, we have to import these AI functions to this session by using this import statement here. So we are importing this data frame extensions and these AI functions from there. And now we can check out our first AI function, which is similarity. And this basically compares the meaning of two pieces of text and returns the score between minus one and one. So basically this function is quite straightforward. You just give it two strings and then this function compares those two strings and determines this semantic similarity of those two strings. Basically are those two strings about the same topic and then determines the score for those strings based on that. So here we are defining a data frame and to that data frame we are adding two columns, text A, text B. And to those columns we are adding some strings there. For example, in text A we have Bill Gates and then in text B we have Microsoft. And then on the second row we have Alexi Partanen and then we have again Microsoft. So we can see that is similarity score when using Bill Gates higher than when using my name. So let's run this and let's see what is the result when we run this and what is the similarity score of my name to the Microsoft and what is the similarity score of the Bill Gates to Microsoft. And now the execution is done and here we can see text A and text B and then we can see the similarity score. And indeed we can see that with Bill Gates and Microsoft the similarity score is higher than with Alexi Partner and Microsoft. And here we can also see that Bill Gates Microsoft similarity score is higher than Michael Jordan and basketball. But then we have Paris and France that is even higher. And then Angry Dog and Marxed Fabric similarity score is actually the lowest. Then we have our next function which is class classify. So with this function we can classify things into categories that we define. For example some product descriptions to appropriate categories. And here we are creating a data frame with this column description. And to that description we are adding these sentences. And then we are defining these labels slash categories to which we are going to then classify these descriptions. Here we have the kitchen, bedroom, garage and other. And here we are defining that function that we want to classify the description column and then we are going to output the classification to category column. And let's run this and let's see what kind of result this will yield. And now the execution is done and we can see that it managed to categorize all the descriptions to these different categories. And actually if it fails to categorize the string then it will add a null there. So that is also good to keep in mind that we can have a null category here as well. But in this case we had that other where I think it will dump those things that it cannot categorize that well. 
Then we have our next function, which is analyze sentiment. Basically, this can be used to detect the feeling in text, such as positive, negative, neutral, or mixed. If a sentiment cannot be decided, then the value will be null. Very classical example of this sentiment analysis is to analyze like customer feedback and then determine based on that is it like neutral, positive, or negative feedback that we are getting. And again, here we are creating a data frame and then we are adding this review column and there are some customer reviews that we are going to run through this sentiment analysis to see what kind of sentiment these reviews will get. Let's run our code. And now the execution is done and we can see that we managed to add a sentiment value for each review that we had there. So we didn't get any null values and then we would have to check that did it get it correctly. But these are quite easy examples. So I think that AI can handle these pretty well. And now let's move on to the next function. And here we have the extract function that can pull out specific information from the text and turn it into structured data. And in this example, we are using these strings there and we are trying to pull some different information from these strings like the name, profession and city. And now let's run this and let's see, are we able to pull this information from these strings to their separate columns? And now the execution is done and we can see that from the first string we were able to pull the name, the profession and the city. And also from the second string. So we were able to pull all this information. And if the AI is not able to pull out the information, then we would again get a null value to that specific column. Next, we have this AI function fix grammar. That is quite obvious what this does. Basically, it just fixes grammar errors. And here we have some strings that we are adding to a data frame. And these strings have some slight errors here and there. And then we are trying to fix them with this code here. So let's run this and we are going to get out this corrected version of that. And here we have the result. So here we had the original text and here is the correct text. So for example, in the first row, we have there are an error here and this AI fixed it. There is an error here. So it was able to spot that there is a grammar mistake in that sentence. Also with these other examples here, it was able to fix those slight errors that I added to the text. Next, we have this summarize function that can be used to create summaries from this longer text. It can be actually used in two ways, either to summarize a specific column or to summarize the whole row. In this example, I'm only summarizing the specific column that is going to be this long description that I have added here. And here I'm actually specifying that the input column is going to be that description. But we can also run it in a mode that it would summarize the whole row. Then I'm also adding these two extra columns here to measure the length of the original text and then to measure the length of the summary so that we can compare how much the AI shortened that original text. And now let's run this code and let's see how does those summarization look. And now the execution is done and we can see that it managed to shorten the original text by summarizing it. But we can see that these summaries are not that much shorter than the original text. Of course, I'm not using a super long text here. So probably if I would have a longer text, maybe the summaries would be shorter in comparison to that. Next, we have this translate function that can be used to translate text to another language. Basically, in this case, we will just define the language to which we want to translate the text, but the AI will determine what is the input language. And here I have two text in Finnish that is actually my native tongue. And now I'm going to use the AI translate function to translate them to English. And let's run this and let's see what are these texts in English. And now the texts have been translated and the first one actually says, remember everyone to subscribe to my YouTube channel and you can also become a channel member that gives you a lot of cool benefits. And the next one says, remember to use the certiace.com platform when you train for certification exams. Because in the certiace platform, we have some custom made practice questions for DP600, DP700 and DP900. And also AC900 is coming there soon. And I'm one of the co-founders of the platform. And all the questions on this platform are custom made. And now let's move on to our last AI function, which is generate response. Basically with this AI function, we can instruct the AI with some type of prompt to do things for us, which is more of this kind of a like typical AI scenario that the people are used with, like for example, using a chatbot like ChatGPT. 
And here we are generating a data frame and to that data frame we are adding two columns. First we are adding some products and then we are adding some prices to those products. And then we are actually going to use this AI function in two ways. First, we are defining this static prompt. That is the static text that we are saying that write a short punchy email subject line for a winter sale. And then we are running this same function in a different mode and we are specifying this is prompt template true, which means that we are able to use the columns in the prompt itself. And in that case, we have to use these curly brackets and add those columns to those curly brackets when we want to use them. And in that case, we are saying write a one line ad for product under price dollars. So that will utilize those two columns as part of the prompt. So the prompt will change for every row. And now let's run this and let's see what is the result. And here we can see the result. So here we have the first the subject for those emails. And then we have these ads that the AI generated for us. And like I demonstrated to you, these AI functions are really simple and easy to use in notebooks. So it is very easy to incorporate this as part of your data engineering or data analysis workflows. But like with any AI tools, it is good to keep in mind that AI can make mistakes. So don't build like heavy logic on top of the columns that you have derived using AI functions. Just keep that in mind. And that was all that I wanted to cover today. Remember to check out my YouTube channel for more Moxed Fabric content and join to the Master Moxed Fabric Discord server to discuss with other people who are using and learning fabric. But now I thank you for watching and see you in the next video.